two out, one run game, and the 3 2 is on the outside corner. It's strike three called. Ball game over, and the Astros defeat the Twins 3 2. Houston advances to the American League Championship Series with a date with the Texas Rangers. A date with two Hall of Fame managers. Let me do it one more time. Ah! Sorry to go all DMX on your ass this morning, but it is a wonderful day to be a Houston Astros fan because they officially made the playoffs. They don't start until the ALCS here, baby. Woo! That was a nail biter of a game. They took down the Minnesota Twins, though, three to two, despite Jose Arquiti. Not a lot of work this year. Not a lot of postseason work recently. Last year, he only pitched that one game against Seattle. He goes out. He shoves. Filthy stuff. Jose Abreu, AL Central King, dominates the Minnesota Twins again. Michael Brantley gave you a home run. And the Astros bullpen came in and gave you a vintage last year in the playoffs kind of performance. Ryan Presley did make it a little. Ryan Stresley, but nearest Abreu, Presley. 14 strikeouts in all for the Houston Astros. It is a wonderful day. And if you want to celebrate with me, phone lines are open from the get-go. 713-780-3776 to call, to text. You can join on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. I watched the game last night at... Wakefield Crowbar, shout out to everybody who came out. It was a lively, rowdy atmosphere. People lost their bleep when the Astros ultimately won the game. We even had sarcastic, we want Houston chance not too long afterwards. And shout out to our friends at Wakefield Crowbar for hosting us. Hung out with a couple of people. Um, I believe... Uh, uh, he was calling himself La Grasa. He was giving me a lot of crap for uh, maintaining my sober October streak. I was very tempted over the course of this game. Also, uh, Will, a couple other guys. It was great to hang out. Um, Sean, I, I, I missed seeing you there. I mean, I was the only man of the people on ESPN 97.5. I stuck there for the entirety of that game. Um, but... It was a lively atmosphere. It's fun to watch games at a bar. What was your game watching experience like? Uh, like all the other Astros playoff, like ninety five percent of the Astros playoff game, just in my room, in your watching room. them on TV. That's kind of yeah. depressing. We we got to have a social event. No, I don't have to. No, <sighs> I'm okay just watching. Uh, you know, no, it doesn't really matter until the World Series, in my well, mind, which I is mean, actually true. Yeah. But hey, you're allowed to be happy today. You are. I saw actually some pushback. Not from many people. No one locally on this. But the best moment last night was honestly not that nail-biter of a game. Which was stressful at times. Uh, the Twins are a good team. I, I felt like they did give it an honest effort in this series. It was when Justin Verlander was passed the speech baton by Dusty Baker in the Astros clubhouse. A wonderful moment as Justin Verlander assaulted the FCC. I guess since this was on cable, it was okay. You're allowed to show the cussies when it's 10 p.m. or later. I don't know if it was quite 10 p.m., but anyway, Justin Verlander, take it away, baby. Who's gonna do the celebration? Who wanna do the celebration? Me? Yeah! No, 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 no. I'm doing the World Series. You do this. Yeah! All right, all right. Come on, please. All right, Boys, this is uh this is one of those seasons, you know, nothing went our way early. We battled through injuries. Yeah. We grinded. I wasn't even here. I'm happy to be back. The seventh time. Seventh time, all right? Don't take that for granted. On seven. Everybody pop these motherfuckers. One, two, three. Oh, my 
God, I can't get enough of that. That was great. Nice little improv speech. Shout out to Fox Sports just letting it roll as well. I think once he got like the f- the first S bomb and the first F bomb, they're like, I mean, what are we just got to ride this out <laughs> for yeah. however, however long he goes? Yeah. Rupert Murdoch, king of media. What is happening? What is going on? Why are all these cuss words being a- uttered over the air? I'll tell you what's going on. Rupert Murdoch, don't give a bleep. Except for when he fired me. Hey, the Astros, they advanced to the ALCS. If you want to talk about the Rangers, too, we, we can touch on that. I, I do want to stay today in the moment thinking about where this team is. And the three biggest stars of last night's game, number one, Jose Arquiti. You are lying if you thought he was going to do that. I expected three to four innings. I was hoping for less than two runs. I figured if they gave less than two runs from there, it would be a little tricky. Who do you put in next? Do you put in JP France? And Urquidy, who has so much experience pitching for this team, specifically in big moments, maybe not so much the last couple of years, came in and that was a hell of a performance. It was stressful early, right, Sean? I mean, there's the double... You're, and and then um, Jeremy Pena makes one of the best defensive plays I think I've ever seen a shortstop make. Dives to his left, tags the runner out somehow. By the way, Jeremy Pena, it feels like in those four games, had like two or three plays like that every game. Where it was like two or three plays where you're like, that is one of the best fielders at that position. He's Gold Glover, right. And, and But he did that. Again, several times every like the, he. I don't think he made a routine play. They were all like yeah. like ones where the twins batters are slamming their helmets back in the dugout. Yes, shout to Carlos Correa. Right. I mean, shoot. A little bit later, Correa hit that line drive straight. To, like I think they said it was the hardest hit ball of the game. 108 miles per hour <laughs> straight at Pena, and he catches it. And then you see him stick his tongue out. Fox Sports showed that. Was that for the kids too? I hope not. No. I so after the game, he said, you know, my celebration was for the kids at the children's hospital. Right. That celebration was for the moms of the kids at the children's hospital. Jeremy Pena, give me more children for the children's hospital. That was for the nurses. (laughs) So Pena makes that play happen, but then Royce Effing Lewis. God, that guy's good. (laughs) Home run. And when when he hit that home run off for Keedy, I was like, oh God, this is going to go not so well. And... Thank goodness Michael Brantley hit the home run the next inning. I do wonder where they would have been confidence-wise. I mean, obviously, they've been through a lot, so it probably wouldn't have phased them that much. But I think everyone at Wakefield Crowbar was pretty damn quiet after that because we were all like, damn, how long is Hergiti going to last? And then from that home run to the home run that he allowed in the fifth inning, I I could not be more impressed by Hergiti. And it wasn't just that he was retiring everybody. And the Twins do strike out a lot. He had six strikeouts on the game. It's... The stuff he was throwing looked pretty. And maybe it's a lack of familiarity with Urquidy because we haven't seen him a whole lot this year. But the stuff he was throwing was dancing. It was moving all over the place. Martin Maldonado, our guy, maybe not the best at the plate, maybe not the best running out base, uh, (laughs) running out infield uh, ground outs. Maldonado called a great game. So Urquidy's the the number one star. Jose Abreu... I, I'm going to say it right now. I know uh, not Santa, who listens to ESPN 97.5 religiously, has been demanding an apology. I apologize to Jeff Bagwell. Uh, I also apologize to Jeff Bagwell. And I'm very happy to apologize to Jeff yes. Bagwell. Sean, are you happy to apologize? I'm, I'm ecstatic, worth every penny. Not Santa, please stop tagging me in the tweets. I know. We, we've we've actually kind of apologized a couple of times. Yeah. So, so, oh. so stop. He also gave Montero we, a bag. N- yeah. The Montero <laughs> one. Not on, you know what? Not on, not on today. Not today happen. when they make the playoffs. Not today. <laughs> he didn't, no negativity. Montero didn't even pitch yesterday. Positive vibes. Because today is the best day of our life. We don't have to worry about anything until Sunday, which is great. Honestly, I'm pretty worn out. It's It's been a stressful last couple of days with all this baseball. I love playoff baseball, but I, it does. Like, I love playoff baseball so much more than regular season baseball. But good God. It, it, it makes me tired. I forget to eat. I don't sleep right. I woke up this morning at the crack of dawn so I could go do TV. I did my live stream last night, and I'm whining. Uh, no, no negativity. It's a great day. Yeah. Wonderful day. 
Jose Abreu, back to him. Holy crap, man. I mean, uh, you could kind of sense Twins fans have a totally different perspective of Abreu because of all his time with the Chicago White Sox. Yeah. Because they were booing him, and there was, like, murmured quiet with him out there from Twins fans who were supposedly so loud and so into the game. But whenever Abreu came up, it was like, murmured boos because they know that this guy kicks their ass even if he's been on the White Sox for the longest time. And he's hit like three home runs to the hardest parts of the ballpark to hit him. That home run that he hit and the Fox Sports broadcast like didn't know that it was going out of the park. What are you doing? But he hit that to dead effing center. What, 450 home run uh, foot average on all of his home runs in the last two games? Yeah, I, I mean... I, I maybe we need to talk to a Twins fan or a Minnesotan, but basically, like you said, like the amount of respect that Jose Abreu got from that crowd makes me think that he's their Albert Pujols. Like he yeah. is there, he is their great, Albert Pujols. Great whereas, call. Here comes the boogeyman. Oh my God, he's about to ruin our season. Yeah, and and he did. And yeah, there's a there's another home run. Who's this? What's this guy's name? Uh, uh, Julien. Yeah, Julien. Julien looks like Baker Mayfield, Eduard. and he went way too crazy with the eyebrow manicuring. He, Those are that's the that's the Julien part. That's the I think that's the French part. Listen, I'm French. I'm French Canadian. I I I have mammoths, and I take care of these things too upstairs. Yeah. Right? It would be one if I didn't pluck it in the middle. But he's gone crazy with it. Okay, like that's I've told Anthony Davis he needs to pluck the unibrow. Uh, this Julien character, whatever the f his Just first name scale is, scale it back a little. I, I I refuse to say his first name. Edward. Yeah, he, he looks like he looks like Metro Baker Mayfield, which is nothing wrong with. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, so that guy hits the home run, and and after that, you're wondering how much longer Rakiti is going to go in there. Dusty Baker, for the people who second guess him. I, I I think Dusty showed some balls leaving him in as long as he did. Like, it would have made sense to potentially pull him uh, before the sixth inning. Instead, he lets him pitch a little bit. Yeah, he let him pitch after the home run. He got a couple of outs. And then into the game comes Hector Neris, who definitely got a little help from our boy Blue. Make-up call for the four outs that uh, Christian Javier had to get. In game three, probably. And that, folks, is why we back the blue. We back the blue. Mo- moments, moments like that. Right, Sean. We we don't get mad at umpires because we we understand it's a tough it's a tough job. And sometimes I had no idea what happened because at Wakefield Crowbar, we couldn't hear what was going on in the broadcast. Mm. All of a sudden, everyone's walking towards the dugout, and we're like, "What the hell just happened?" None of us knew what happened. I, I thought that either one, uh, actually, what I thought happened, I thought Maldonado threw him out at second base. Because the inning just ended and we didn't hear any context, and I was like, "Wait, he was clearly yeah, safe. He was, he was, you, you could see him when he turned around. I think yeah. it was Lewis that uh, went for the steal. You could see when he turned around and saw that like Pena was walking away. Everyone was walking away. He turned around the ump like already pissed off because he thought he called him out because yeah, he was safe by a mile and also the ball, the pitch was a ball. Yeah, it by, was such a ball. Uh, it probably wasn't even an extra close. baseball. You could probably fit an <laughs> extra baseball between where the pitch was caught and right. the strike zone. It, it wasn't close at all. It was a terrible, it was, it, uh, hey, whatever. I'll take it. Nearest gets out of it. Abreu, jeez. Man, he, he looked good. And then at the end, Ryan Presley. Okay, when he fell off the mound, I was like, oh, God. I thought he just I thought he to- broke his leg. I thought he tore I did every, too. every time they showed it, it looked worse and worse. It, it was a, uh, oh, shoot. Why do we always forget his name? The guy who had to get, like, uh, stretchered off the field for the Astros. Jake Odorizzi. Jake Odorizzi. Was like, I thought you were going to say Kevin Ware. <laughs> no, no, oh, no. He didn't break his leg, no. But, yeah, three balls with every single batter. Yeah, well, um, full counts. <laughs> and and then, I mean after he fell he like was throwing the ball in the dirt <laughs> five to ten feet in front Jesus I, I had a I have a friend he's he's a uh, he used to play baseball so he I think he knows a little bit more than me a- after a Bray's eighth he's like leave a Bray you in just leave him in for the rest of the game and as Presley is throwing all of these balls that are nowhere near. <laughs> The catcher. Like, there were a couple that went just right by Maldonado, too. <laughs> he's throwing them at fans. He's <laughs> yeah, rolling he, them. Presley really made it a little bit too fun, you know? Like, it, it is the most stressful. I think he struck out the side, right? I, I, maybe there, were, maybe it was two strikeouts, but it was the most stressful two strikeouts. It, you could it was really have. stressful, but they got it done. And I, I'm so happy today.